time. Maybe a siphon for something else. Yeah. Or as someone mentioned, maybe a larvae in house. Not sure though. Up oh, there it goes. And a larvacean is a um, a type of tunicate. So, I was looking up tunicates the other day, and mm -hmm. I believe they're under the is it a phylum? Correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong. Um, chordates, chordata. Yeah. And I was curious why why that is because uh, chordates are characterized by, a, say, a central nervous system through something mm -hmm. like a spine or a skeleton or something mm -hmm. of the sort. And looking at it, you know, I think it was its larval stage. It kind of has like a, almost a, something that looks like a backbone. And then it later grows into its uh, later stage. It looks kind of more like a stalked mm -hmm. creature. But still just thinking Why? about that was uh, kind of strange. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, oh, another jelly thing passed by. Man, a siphonophore on Atalanta's cam. That we've been seeing a lot. Um, yeah, so tunicates are not vertebrates. They're one, I guess not one level above, but they're not tunicates um, because they do have like a central nervous system, or at least when they are developing, they have a notochord. Um, and they lose that notochord during their development, but they still have it during their development, so that's, oh. Little jelly. Um, so that's why they're classified that way. Mm -hmm. And then another larva sea in house. Yeah. I see that now. Or maybe, I don't know. Oh, we have a fish in Atalanta Cam. Oh, is that an angler fish? No, yeah. I can't see. Hopefully it comes in her view. Yeah, looks really small though. Um, but yeah, they're cool. They're really cool. They're really interesting, at least. And um, one example of a tunicate, I mean, let me just Google this to make sure. Oh, a jelly on Atalanta Cam. Oh, never mind. that's not an example, but they're cool. Oh, and look at that very, those very clear jellies. Some true scythozoans right there with their tentacles and their, um, I forget what the tops are called. Man. There. Bell, yeah. There we go. Would someone in the back row be willing to go to the deck and see if anybody's there? Yeah, I yeah. can. Can you let them know we're about 30 minutes yeah. from the surface? Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Me? No, no, I was pushing buttons here, though I might have done something. Something I didn't even know I could do. So, Daniel, when's your next ship to shore react? Um, 
interaction? Probably be next Tuesday because this is Saturday, it's the weekend, most people are in school, and Monday oh, yeah. is Memorial Day in the U.S. Oh, wow. So people are also off for that day. But we're still on doing credible science out here in the Central <laughs> Pacific. Nice. So we are currently ascending from an unnamed guillot. Uh, that we are exploring in the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument. Where we are actually lies right outside of the boundaries of the monument, but it's still important to understand what's down here, as is part of the exclusive economic zone of the United States. We are currently about 500 meters uh, to the ocean surface, and close to 100 or 50 meters, uh, the SPL will be turned off for then to let the ROV pilots uh, have the comms to talk over getting Hercules up. But in the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in a chat online and we'll be here to answer them. Um, okay. So I told Megan, are you, were you unable to get to Mike? Okay. He wasn't answering the radio. Okay. Well, Megan knows. Um, so... Yeah, I would say try again in like five minutes or so yeah. or something. But yeah, someone knows. So we're good. Thank you. Yeah, it is raining outside, so. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, won't we Not too bad, rain. but you know. Are we good to start tracking a line forward? Uh, I would. I was gonna wait till 400, but you can do it now if you like. Cool. Yeah, we're not seeing much yet, but there is possibility for big fish and shark sharks when we get to the surface. trying to think what else we can talk about. Um, when is our next dive is a question. Our next dive will be uh, 9 a.m. HST tomorrow, I believe, is the plan. Um, there might, I think we're going to do some mapping after this, so, yep. It's going to be fun to feel this uh, ship steer back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> the ships, um, the ship to map goes in a, in a line kind of, in a, I don't know how to describe it, but in lines. And the lines Belly have to be, line. <laughs> yeah, the lines have to be really close to each other. So they make really, really sharp turns. Yep. Imagine like uh, you're using a printer to copy a, something on a piece oh, of paper. Yeah and the laser goes back and forth on that paper yes. to get a high resolution of it. That's essentially what we're doing with our uh, sonar cool. mapping. And we use a technology called uh, bathymetry, which takes a multi-beam sonar and fans it out on the ocean floor. And we can see down about 8,000 meters below the ocean surface, and about 6,000 meters wide, I believe. and this data gives us a high resolution of, I'm not sure how to double check on that, but it's a lot better than the maps that we do have of the ocean that are taken by satellites. And often the resolution there is probably like one pixel for every like couple of miles or so. 
So we're missing a lot of key details. And the work we do here is helping us build an even more detailed maps of the ocean floor. This is why when we say that uh, our vast oceans uh, cover 70% of the world and yet only 5% have been explored, it's really only that 5% that's actually been thoroughly mapped with this high resolution data. Some sort of wormy thing. So yeah, some more questions. Are you on in. channel one or two? Yep. Yeah. So somebody in the chat asks, oh, what Jeff. age were you when you knew you wanted to go into this field? Huh. So that's a great question. For many of us, uh, uh, there's, this there's field is something that we kind of came across as we were looking to figure out what do we want to be when we grow up. And sometimes <laughs> that's when we're really young or when we're much older. So for you, Sarah, for example, uh, how did you get into being a marine yeah, biologist? Yeah, so I knew I wanted to do marine biology, or at least I think so, starting when I was 20. <laughs> um, sophomore, well, beginning of junior year of college. Wait. Wait, yep, math. Um, I was, so I live in Philadelphia. There's no ocean. Um, I was in a genomics, a phylogenetics lab that focused on medicine and a human, human stuff, disease, epigenetics, all really interesting, great lab. Yeah, um, but I just wasn't interested. <laughs> Um, oh, another jelly. Um. Oh, fish. Oh. Wiggle, oh, wiggle. Yeah. So pretty. I just wasn't interested, so I looked around. Well, I started asking professors at my university, hey, do you have a spot open? And, um, my, my, the lab that I, the deep sea lab that I got into, the PI was like, yeah, come join. Um, and that was kind of it. Oh, another siphonophore. Um, but it was kind of by circum by like chance. Um, and I just kind of fell into it and really like it. And I really like how novel a lot of the things are. Um, with terrestrial ecosystems, there is still a lot of new things to be discovered. But um, with the deep sea, it's just kind of like, it's, some, it's a place that we can't touch, we can't really go to. Like firsthand, I guess you can't really have a f a field season. Oh, huh? Oh, huh? Two, three, three, that. Oh, technical difficulties. One moment, please. 